Hi writers, today I'm talking about how can I know when I can trust my intuition. Before I dive into today's topic, I just want to let you all know this is video three in a three-part series I'm doing to launch my new class coming to May, Finding Your Writing Magic. A um, big shout out and thank you to all of you who have sent me emails and messages with questions about the class. People are really excited. I've never done a class, a writing class, quite like this one before, so I'm pretty excited too. Um, I really didn't expect such a big response on it though. I thought, well, I'm kind of weird and I like these weird magical topics and I hope other people do too because I really want to teach on them. And then I got a big response from people in the audience who said, I've been waiting for something like this. I'm so excited. So thank you so much if you sent me a message. So in this new class, um, basically what I'm going to be teaching is how to tap into your intuition, how to reconnect with your intuitive center so that you can move from frustrated with your writing, um, maybe you feel like writing is hard work or it feels like no fun, um, it feels like it's a difficult struggle. Maybe you feel like you're making no progress. People who are in this state usually feel like I can't see any measurable progress with my writing. This class is going to take you from that place to feeling like writing is fun again, feeling like writing is more playful than it is work, feeling like writing happens with ease. And maybe it's not easy all the time, but you're excited about it and you have a new energy because you're working with your natural intuitive flow. So you have more energy to forge ahead on your creative path. That's what this whole new class is about. So in the mini video series I'm doing right now to give people a taste of what to expect, I'm really focusing on intuition because that's going to be a core concept I'm teaching in this class. The top question I've been getting from people, which is why I'm doing this video today, is how can I trust what my intuition is telling me? The last video I did was how to know the difference between fear and intuition. That's another really common question I get. But I get this question a lot from my clients. I get it in other classes. People say, I know I'm intuitive. I've gotten intuitive messages in the past that have come true. So I can see that there's some evidence for this in my own life, but I just have a lot of trouble trusting that. I have a lot of difficulty knowing how I can trust what's coming through. What are the signs to look for? What are the techniques that I can use to help me trust that my intuition is giving me good information? So this is a really valid question um, because if you don't have signs you can trust or a technique you can use, it does feel a lot of the time like you're just randomly guessing. And it can appear to other people as well as if you are just randomly guessing. And if you are an intuitive person, you know what this experience is like. You've grown up with family or friends who may react to you in this way when you say, I don't know how, but I know that I can't trust that person, or I don't know how I know this, but I know I'm supposed to take this new direction in my life. And then your family or your friends say, but how do you know that? And you can't explain it. And then you do kind of look like you're randomly guessing. So intuitive people are usually very used to being questioned by other people and not having anything concrete that they can give back to them and say, this is how I know. This is, happens every time. This, these are the signs that I need to pay attention to. I know that within myself. I can be really confident of that. So that's something we are going to be learning in this new class is how to trust what your intuition is bringing through. So how do you do this? Well, you start with knowing that every single intuitive person has a set of unique inner cues that show up through the body when their intuition is trying to tell them something. This is not uh, really new information. When intuitive people learn this, they're like, oh yeah, now that I think of it, my body does always react in a very certain way when my intuition's trying to tell me something. I just didn't know what that was, or I didn't know how important that was, or I didn't know I needed to pay attention to it. So if you think about it, you have unique cues that are triggered in your body when your intuition is trying to tell you something. For a lot of intuitive people, a really common example is tingling on the skin. That's a big one for me, almost like electric prickles. Um, for me, when my intuition is just sort of trying to get my attention, I might feel them in my arms, like on the tops of my arms, on the skin on my arms. If the intuition is becoming stronger, I'll get them on my arms and my legs. 
And if it's a really strong message, if my intuition is like really almost trying to yell at me, I'll get it whole body and I'll get it on my scalp as well. So skin tingling or feeling an electrical sensation on your skin, that's a really common one for intuitive people. Another one is feeling a sensation in your gut. And of course, we've all heard like I had a gut feeling, <clears throat> listen to your gut on this. You know, that gut feeling that is a metaphor, that's a way of saying your intuition is trying to tell you something, but that's also rooted in the physical. A lot of intuitive people feel things in their gut or their stomach. They might feel a pulling or they might feel a flip-flop in their stomach. They might feel their stomach moving or they feel um, maybe like a pulling down sensation if they're if their intuition is trying to tell them or warn them against something negative, they might feel like a drop in the stomach or a coldness in the stomach. That's another really common one. Um, sometimes you might feel a shift in your breathing. This one's really immediate and quick. And if you don't catch it, it can happen and you don't even notice it. But sometimes you will get information or somebody will tell you something. Maybe somebody tells you something and they're lying and you will get a constriction in your breathing. Or somebody tells you something and they say they're looking out for you and it's for your own good, but really underneath their true motivation is that they are trying to shame you or they're trying to make you feel guilty. A lot of times in that kind of situation where a person is saying one thing that they say they are saying for a positive reason, but underneath they have negative intent, you'll get a shift in your breathing. Your breathing might feel caught up short, you might feel short of breath, um, you might feel constricted, or you might feel like your lungs are um, sort of withdrawing the breath, like you're drawing your breath down into your body, you're retreating, you can feel that shrinking, that shrinking back, and it starts in the chest. Um, you might also feel some discomfort in the chest around the heart area. Again, when somebody around you is being dishonest or they're being manipulative, or you can sense that they're trying to harm you or hurt you some way emotionally, even if that's not what they're saying. You might feel that in the heart area. Now, I could go on and on. There's dozens of these examples. It really depends on you and where you get information in your body. It's different for every single intuitive person. But once an intuitive person learns their unique set of cues, that's when you can start to really begin to trust the intuition that's coming through to you. Now, the other piece of this, this is sort of the key piece. You get the information, your body reacts. So then you get that information from your body of like, oh, something's going on. Every time my skin tingles, it, you know, it always kind of means this. Or every time I feel this in my heart space or in my solar plexus, it usually means this. So you start with that cornerstone that key information, and then you ask for an outer sign. You ask the universe to back you up on this, to give you additional information, to confirm what you're feeling, to reinforce your hunch that all is not as it should be, or that this is the right path for you. You ask for additional information. That information will show up in the, sun, in the form of synchronicity. And learning about synchronicity is one of the most powerful tools an intuitive person could use and to have in their toolbox is to ask for synchronicity and then be able to watch for it. Now, synchronicity might come to you in a thousand different forms, but you will know it when it shows up because you will feel it. When the synchronicity, the sign in the outer world shows up, maybe it's a song, maybe you see an eagle, you know, maybe it's a person calling you who you haven't talked to in years. You will not be able to predict what it is, but when it shows up, you're going to get that body cue again, right? So the person's going to call, you'll see the eagle, you'll hear the song, and you'll get the skin tingle, and you'll get the sensation in your stomach, and you'll get the shift in your breathing, whatever it is. So it comes full circle. So once you can learn, okay, this is my set of body cues. Then I'm going to ask the universe. I'm going to wait for the synchronicity. When the synchronicity shows up, I'll feel the body cues again, and then I can tune into my knowing. That's the information I need. That's the confirmation I need. I know I can move ahead with that information. I know I can trust it. So we are going to be talking about 
all of this stuff in the new class and not just how to apply it to life, but how to apply it to your writing, how to apply it to your creativity. Because once you really start to groove with this and you're like, okay, I know what's going on with my body. I know how my intuitive cues come through. I know how to ask for the synchronicity and see it and recognize it and accept it when it shows up. I know I can trust that. Your creative channel is really gonna open. Your writing life is going to change. That's when you're gonna move from trying to push yourself and control everything and be more productive as a writer and not having much fun in the whole process. Doing all of that, you're gonna move from okay, the path is opening in front of me. I just need to be open and follow it. I just need to keep my eyes open, tune into my body, listen to my body, wait for the synchronicities and follow them. And that's how you do it. There's a lot more tools you can use to make this process easier. We're gonna be learning about all of them in the class. Um, I do also wanna say I've gotten a lot of emails from you guys asking, is this course, is this class different from the intuitive writing video course? The answer is yes. This class is entirely new material. Now we are going to briefly touch on the intuitive writing method because it can be helpful, but we're only going to briefly touch on that. So if you are primarily interested in that method, the intuitive writing method, buy the video course, start there. You don't have to have done that course to do this class, however. You can be a total newbie to all of this, sign up for this class, have it be a really nice fit and have a really great time. The only qualification is that you are interested in learning about your intuition. You're interested in learning about the intuitive side of life. You're interested in opening yourself up to a different way of looking at things. Now, the last thing I'll say, uh, because I've also gotten messages, am I gonna teach this class again? Am I gonna make a video course out of it? No, I'm not. I'm not gonna be teaching this class again. I've never repeated a live class. When I first started teaching, I thought maybe I would. Um, it's been a few years now, and that's just not how I roll. I always wanna do new stuff. So I'm not going to be teaching this class again in the future as a live class, this is it. And I'm not going to be doing a video course. So this is really it. If you cannot make these classes live, you will get the replays. So that's always an option if you're in a different time zone or you can't make it, you have prior commitments you will get the replays. You can work through it at your own pace once you have the replays in the weeks or the months after the class. So that might be a nice option if you know you can't make it, but you also really don't wanna miss out. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm launching the class in two days, day after tomorrow. I open doors for registration. I'll have all the info on the registration page at that time, but if you want stuff ahead of, you know, ahead of the game or beforehand, please email me, writecitysf at gmail.com. There's a contact form on my website. You can leave a comment in the comments box below. And please sign up for my newsletter to make sure you get all the updates and announcements on the class and subscribe to my channel because I do a lot of content for intuitive writers, highly sensitive writers, um, people who approach life and writing in kind of a different way than the mainstream, you could say. So if this is resonating with you, please subscribe to my channel and please send me your questions. I'm so excited about this class and I'm so excited to see you guys at registration. Okay, I'll see you in just a couple days. Thanks everyone.